Well, I want us to get an idea about where our numbers are in the number line. So I apologize for the low techiness of this. But here's a good number line for you. Let's make sure it does have the error on both ends. So if I were to talk about where is the number 1 half, where does 1 half show up? Right, I, I love how you guys are just pointing to the screen. That's right. It does. That's <laughs> we're on the right track there. It should be between where? Ooh, no. Is is one half? What, hold on a second. Is one half proper or improper? Proper, which means it has a value between zero and one. So what this means is that if I take between zero and one, and, and if I were to divide this guy evenly, if I were to split this into two equal parts, because that's what the denominator says. So here would be cutting into halves, right? So this is zero halves. This would be one half. And we don't really write it this way, but this guy would be two halves. What's two divided by two? This guy does equal one. So you see how that makes sense, right? And if I were to go over here, keep doing it in halves. So it's one, two. This guy would be what? That would be three halves on the number line. Do you all agree with that? You're looking happy. The denominator tells you how many parts you divide something into. Okay, so let's let, let's look at that. One of the biggest problems that we have here is understanding what the denominator means. So in this fraction one half, what part of this is the denominator? Which part? Is the one or the two the denominator? Two. The two is the denominator. Let's talk about what the denominator means. This is how many equal parts, how many equal parts something is divided into. It's how many equal parts something is divided into. So if I were to take something like this, here is one whole unit. Okay, If I were to cut this evenly down the middle, or just cut it into two equal parts, one half would mean taking one part of this, right? So if I look here on the number line, if I go between 0 and 1, if I look at just this part right here, and I divide that evenly into two equal parts, each part is going to be a half. So this is a half right here, and this is another half. So if I'm trying to graph this point one half, it's going to be right here, right? What if I were to say negative one half? Where do you think negative one half would be? should be between the zero and the negative one. So here we are cutting that in the middle. So this is cutting into half. So there's negative one half. And that's where that point would fall. <coughs> okay. So the denominator is how many equal parts something is divided into. And then we talk about what the numerator means. And the numerator is how many parts we have. It's how many parts we have, how many parts that we're looking at, how many parts that we're taking. So let's look at, um, let's look at another fraction, see if we can get another, uh, a better idea about where these fractions are, where do we see them on the number line. Where are they in relation to the integers that we're used to seeing? Okay, so far to have if I were to have this if I had the number two thirds. What does the number two thirds mean? If I've got my number line here, that means I'm dividing 
each whole unit into how many pieces? Three. I'm dividing it into three equal pieces. So between zero and one, I'm dividing this into three equal pieces. Between one and two, I could divide this into three equal pieces as well, where each piece here, of course this isn't perfect, I'm just doing the best I can, each piece here is one third. So when I have two thirds, where does two thirds go? Here? No. Here? No. Two thirds, right, because look, this, this whole piece right here is one unit, right? How many thirds are in one whole unit? There are three thirds in one whole unit because three divided by three is one, right? If I want to take two thirds, two thirds, I hope you guys can understand that two thirds is less than three thirds, right? Mm -hmm. So at least on the number line, you've got one third here and you've got two thirds here. So this is where my two thirds is located. Do you all agree? Thank you. Okay, what if I wanted to graph five-thirds. Well, five-thirds is no longer a proper fraction, is it? Five-thirds is what we call what? Im improper. So as I were to, if I were to keep counting these thirds here, so we know that one is three-thirds, so this guy would be four-thirds here, this would be five-thirds, and of course two is what? If I keep going in terms of my thirds, how much is two? Two is six-thirds, right? Now, it looks weird to say six-thirds. If you look at this as a division problem, what's six divided by three? Two. Six divided by three is two. So if you have pieces that are in terms of thirds, this denominator tells you that three equal parts make up a whole unit. If you have six of those parts, how many complete units can you make? If it takes three for a whole unit and you have six parts, how many whole units can you make? You can make two, right? Think about if you're, you put it into terms of stuff that you may do. Did you guys make any, have you ever made goodie baskets for people? Goodie bags, maybe it's for a kid's Valentine's party or it's Christmas and you want to give, you know, candy and treats to the teachers or to the pediatrician's office so that you can make sure that you're seen first when you go in there. But maybe, you know, you've got three parts there. Well, if I've got six, if I've got six things, and each bag gets three, so that's gonna be two bags that I can fill with that. What if I have five thirds? I need, that means I need three equal parts to make a whole unit. How many complete units can I make with five thirds? You can make one whole unit and you're going to have how many left over? You're going to have two pieces left over. Now look where five thirds shows up on the number line. Five thirds is right here. Do you see that? So if you're doing thirds, you have enough to make one whole unit and then you have two extra thirds. Do you all see that? Now if I had six thirds, then I could have two whole units. Do you all agree? And if I were to say this. If I had negative, negative four-thirds, where do you think that guy would end up? Well, which side, what side of the zero would he end up on? The left side. On the left side. So if I do this, equal parts out to the left. So they're my thirds. So that's negative one-third, negative two-thirds, negative what? This should be negative three-thirds, right? What's negative three divided by three? Isn't that negative one? You keep going out here because I need to get negative four thirds. So here's negative one third, negative two thirds, negative three thirds, and this is negative four thirds. So there's my negative four thirds. Do you see the different positions that these guys have on the number line? If you were to look at this in terms of absolute value, that may help you out. What's the absolute value of negative four-thirds? Remember doing absolute value? Four-thirds. Right, it's four-thirds. Absolute value is the distance from zero. 
How far, how far away from zero is negative four-thirds? It's four-thirds units away, right? When I say four-thirds units, that means it's one whole unit and a third of another unit. Okay? Remember, we talk about units as being whole pieces. Okay? Any questions about what we have for graphing these guys and where they show up on the number line? Proper fractions will be between 0 and 1. If it's a negative proper fraction, it ends up between where? If it's a proper fraction that's negative, where will it be? Between 0 and negative 1, right? If it's an improper fraction, improper fractions will be 1 or greater. We've talked about that. Because if the numerator is larger or equal to that denominator, it's either going to be 1 or it's going to be larger, like we saw here with 5 thirds. Questions about that? 